Well, in our culture, it's a lot easier to find reasons to stay awake than to go to sleep. Hi, I'm Dr. Debbie Osmond. Thanks for joining me for Start Somewhere Wellness. Have you ever been in a contest where people are bragging about how little sleep they get and how much they get done? Well, we're finding out that sleep is one of the most critical aspects of brain health. We know it's refreshing, but it's hard to get in our culture with, with the lights on and things to look at and things to read and people to talk to 24 hours a day. So today I want to talk about just two ways that sleep actually clears the mind. The first way is that sleep sort of clears the inbox of your brain. It takes those short-term memories and files them into long-term memories. So if you're studying for a test or want to learn a language or even want to just remember people's names or places, you've got to get good sleep to clear your inbox. The second thing that sleep does is it helps clear out the amyloid plaque that builds up in your brain. There, in your brain, there's a, um, a fluid called the glymphatic fluid. And during sleep, uh, this increases. It's like the plumbing system of your brain. And in, when you're sleeping, the, the, the brain cells actually kind of spread out so that this glymphatic fluid can actually wash away some of that amyloid plaque. It's pretty amazing how that happens. So um, they found that there's actually quite a dramatic difference in the space between the cells during sleep. Um, let's see, what else do I want to tell you? Okay, the biggest thing is how in the heck do you get more sleep in our world? The, um, I think it's really important to have just some simple start somewhere strategies and to start with one thing at a time. You've got to have a first a goal to want to get sleep. So if you think about aiming t towards seven to nine hours and, and maybe not all in in one solid stretch, it's pretty, it's pretty normal it seems uh, from everything I've read to wake up maybe once in the middle of the night and to go back to sleep. So, okay, what would be the first thing? The first thing, in my opinion, is to create a relaxing sleep environment. And that means to get your bedroom uh, free of electronics, make it just for, for sleep and sex, and make it a dark place that's cool and a place that you can really um, relax and, and push out the, the cares of the day. The other thing um, that I think is important is to make sure that if you, that you turn off your computer, your cell phone, and any kind of electronics about two hours before bedtime. That gives your brain really a chance to, to slow down, to bring down your cortisol, and to get good sleep. Um, some good wind, wind down things are like to read a book, maybe take an Epsom salts bath, um, have a nice relaxing conversation, don't talk about anything that difficult, no big problem solving, and maybe even journal about what you need to do the next day. That is a great way to, to clear out your brain. Um, it's important to avoid heavy meals or alcohol uh, within about three hours before bedtime. However, it's great to eat some foods that contain magnesium, such as uh, oatmeal, there's uh, potassium is another good thing, and a, ban a banana is a good thing. Um, almonds have a lot of magnesium. Those are good bedtime snacks. Now, this is really tough for me, but it's important to not try too hard. When you can't go to sleep, don't stress over it. And if you wake up in the middle of the night, then just know that that's pretty normal and that you're going to fall back asleep. So I hope you get good sleep. I hope that you prioritize and develop a sleep plan. It's essential to living younger. It's essential to make your body resilient to the stressors in life and to any, any kind of chronic diseases. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please share, uh, like, and joining me next week. 
Next week we're going to do art. See you then. Bye-bye.